Are you surprised that it kind of the the switch clicked so easily, making that transition to AEW? Uh, I mean, I am. I'm, I'm extremely surprised. I'm extremely overwhelmed by it. I'll be honest with you, just because like I'm not used to it at all. But like the fact that uh, this is happening all for me, so I'm still a lot, but, like the fact that this is all happening, man. I'm just blessed. Uh, I cannot believe the the support that I've got so far, man. And it's truly such a blessing just to be a part of this system, man. Have you been able to find your equivalent to Nando's here in the U.S. with the times that you're visiting? I mean, man, I, I won't lie to you. Every time I'm over at the West Coast, I'm in in and out Burger. You just got to try and find me at one of those ones. I'm, I'm always there. I took the, the wife with me yesterday, man. We were just, not yesterday, day before that. Man, we just love that food so much. I know it's bad for you, but it tastes so fucking good. Yeah. Well, so here's the thing. There's a lot of... There's some detractors because nobody agrees with everything, right? And when it comes to In-N-Out, some people don't like the fries because they say they're too flimsy. Are you you still a fan? Like, you don't care? It's just delicious, everything? I think, no, it's just perfect the way it is. Leave it alone. Stop trying to over-critique it. Just enjoy the flipping food, you numpties. Yo, I love it. And it's cheap. And it's cheap. Yeah, uh, man, it's cheap. Yo, uh, when it comes to you joining AEW, uh, there was that time period where I guess we'll call it a bidding war um, and everyone reaching out to see what your future would look like for you going through that before you made your decision with AEW. Was it stressful? Was it rewarding to be like, look, everybody kind of wants me to be with them. Like, how was that process? Uh, it's a little bit of both, man. Like, of course, I'm so grateful that all these companies were like bidding and wanting me to be a part of it, man. Like. But it was also just like, what is going to be best for me and what is going to be best for my family, most importantly. And I knew what the answer was in turn, but like, you have to hear everybody out, man, because you yeah. never know more. Like, there could be avenues and directions, but like, I can't say enough how happy I am that I'm, I get to be a part of AW and just how proud I am to be a part of this system and to be part of this locker room. You uh, you had mentioned in an interview before that AJ Styles kind of reached out to you, uh, yeah. kind of made his pitch. How many people were hitting you up from all these companies to be like, hey, man, th this is what it is over here? Uh, I mean, WWE-wise, yeah, AJ was the, the main guy that came and reached out to me uh, just to fly the flag for him. And he was so – I can't say enough, man. He's – He's my hero, dude. Like in, in, in any retrospect of how he he carried himself in TNA, New Japan, Ring of Honor, like he was the man. And like the fact that he was trying so hard to get me over there, I just I can't begin to tell you enough how much like I appreciate him and how much like I'm so grateful for that moment in time with him, man. But just like uh like a bunch of guys in TNA really want me to come on board as well. And I have to tell you, man, like TNA had a, a real good shot and landing me. They had like a real good but like just uh, AEW just was perfect, man, in terms of scheduling, in terms of family time, in terms of being able to wrestle the way that I want to wrestle and being promoted how I'm being promoted, man. It was just, it was the obvious choice and it's the choice that made me the most happiest. Yo, can I ask you, um, you've, you've talked about how you were a TNA kid and I yeah. wasn't a TNA kid growing up, but I will say going into the Palms that night when you fought Josh Alexander, like, it was such a unique environment and it was so cool because everyone in that audience was so proud TNA's back and it was so unique. Like for you being in that crowd or performing in front of that crowd, like was that one of the more unique situations you've had in your career? Uh, unique, but uh, unique is definitely a word that I would use, but just like I felt accomplished in being in there just because like all I wanted to do was be a TNA kid and like, look, I got to re wrestle for Impact and I got to be in the six side ring at one point in my career. But just like, just having the initials TNA. And like, I, I remember when I was back there for the Impact show where they announced that it was going to be TNA uh, in January. And I looked in the ring and I saw Scott Demore in there. And I can't tell you enough how much respect that I have for Scott Demore. And like, if there was anything that I want to put out there, if there is a way that AEW could hire Scott Demore in any type of fashion, like have that guy run Ring of Honor or something, because the passion that he had for TNA and just how he completely single handedly transformed that company. Like I watched him say that this is TNA, and I saw Josh Alexander in there, I saw Jordan Grace in there, I saw Giselle Shaw, I saw all of these guys, and I just looked and I was like, yeah, man, that was TNA. That is TNA. That got all those guys that they've got backstage, all those guys that they got there now. That is TNA, man. 
Yeah, it, it was a, it was a beautiful thing, and, and I'm glad I was able to be there live to witness it. And um, another thing I want to ask you is, so right after you had made your decision at Full Gear, um, I was lucky enough to talk to Claudio, um, and I kind of I'm going to ask the same question that I asked him. You know, when it comes to American wrestling fans, like we have this, I guess I'm going to call it American ignorance, for lack of a better term, where when we have people that are international. It doesn't matter if you've done main event at Wrestle Kingdom or performed at the Tokyo Dome. There's always this attitude of like, yeah, but you need to do it here. You need to prove it in America because the lights are brighter. Do you, is that perception real where you were like, yeah, I need to do it here to really feel like I've done it all? Yeah, absolutely. Like it's, it's completely a valid point because America is huge. Like, I mean, like from myself personally, right? When we would leave school, it was very difficult for us to become a professional wrestler because like we didn't have any TV station. We didn't have any high end independent companies. Like, so it was, you, you had to go to America to become a professional wrestler. And like, there's so many guys that I would say are so blessed that they could just leave, uh, they could leave school. And there are like places like ring of honor. There are places like TNA. There was like, even like a PWG, like there, there are so many places in America that you could just go to. Right. England, it was so difficult. So, like, getting to do my grinding and grind, my grafting over in England and Japan, like, learning the trade of what professional wrestling is, um, I feel like now I've mastered it. I, I understand it. But, like, coming over to America, it's, it's, a, it's like competing for a brand new belt. And this is almost like the black belt of what professional wrestling is right now. Learning how to connect with an audience, learning how to talk people into the building, learning how to structure matches together that fit an American audience. There's so many things to put into uh, the equation of what it is, but saying it all, I'm enjoying it, man. Like I'm enjoying everything. I'm, I'm enjoying being outside of my comfort zone and learning the trade all over again. No, man, that's a beautiful thing. And look, I'm going to be honest with you. This next question, I'm going to completely 180 has nothing to do with wrestling. It uh, has a lot to do with yourself as a person. Uh, something that I've enjoyed is whether it's you talking about what your decision was leading you to AEW or in your promos with yeah, some of these matchups, you've talked about, um, you know, your love for your family, whether it's the missus, whether it's your son um, and kind of how it helped you mature. And the reason why that stuck with me is because the things that you were saying, like I felt that sidebar, my five year old son is autistic. You speaking on some of the things that you're going through, like it's so dope for me to go. Will can do it. There's no reason you can't. This doesn't stop you or, or detract you from doing anything. But when it comes to love, how has that changed you as a person? Man, the, the love that I've had from my missus and my kid has completely um, transformed me into, like, a man. Dude, I, like, I feel like a lot of the time, like, I went into New Japan at the age of 22 years old and I didn't understand who I was. Like, man, I went through so many different hair colors and hairstyles, like, trying to figure out who the bloody hell was. So hopefully no one goes through those old uh, those hair color photos because honestly, like, there was one stage where I had blue hair, man, and I, I, I need that photo to be erased from my uh, <laughs> from my history if that's possible. But it's all part of me growing up. Hey, it was all part of the system. And then at a point where I, I generally felt like I hit, um, I hit. Uh, I'm not going to say rock bottom, no, no one near, but I, I needed somebody to drag me out of that slump and like meeting my missus and meeting now who is my stepson. And like having that responsibility and being able to just have such an amazing life where I can at one stage be a wrestler, but also be like an, an influence to this child to uh, put a smile on my missus face. It's just, it's overwhelming, man. And like, I didn't know about a lot of, like, I didn't know I had ADHD and I didn't know I was on the spectrum for autism, like until I was 27, man. So like I went through school and like I, they I just still, thought you were weird. They were like, I, we don't know, and they didn't know. I still, dude, I still feel weird. Like I still feel like when I go and talk with my normal friends, and like I, I try and tell them about wrestling, and they just they don't understand it. They don't understand like a lot of it. But like the fact that I, I have their support for it is amazing. But just I, I do feel like a weirdo sometimes. But just like I, I, I sometimes just look at it and just be like, you know what, like. I might, I might be a weirdo, but you know, I'm, I'm happy being a weirdo. Like if this is who I am and this is like, and if other people feel like this then we shouldn't be, we shouldn't feel like it anymore. We should just be like, you know what? I'm happy to be, if I'm a weirdo, I'm happy to be a weirdo, dude. Like this is, 
this is now what I want to do with my life. If anyone that feels like that this thing is like a, a detraction, like turn it into a positive, man. This is a superpower. We can do things that like most normal people can't do. So to have this and to like go on and do like a Wembley Stadium, man, like I never dreamed in my life that like anyone could do it, but let alone some suffers like this, man, like, I'm glad. I'm glad I get to represent these people. I'm glad I get to represent anyone that feels like that they're, they're going to hit like a wall. And if so, like our, our people, man, we can push through that wall no matter what. Listen, man, I'm going to say it again as a father of a son who has autism. Thank you. Cause I can't tell you how many times people try to describe it. And it's like, it's going to hold them down. It's like, no man, everyone's different and, and everyone's different in their own way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and you bring up Wembley stadium uh, to have 81,000. I know you have the number tatted on your arm, whatever that number is uh, to have those people and everyone else across the world singing your song, doing the chance every time your theme song hits. Honestly, you have the new banger, no disrespect to big pressure and Swerve Strickland. You have the banger, theme song of AEW how does that feel did you think when you first heard it did you think that this would be happening oh man like I, I never connected the Osprey chance ever like because by the time I got in the ring it was like the Osprey chance have already gone I only started noticing it when it was in Japan and I noticed it and I was like I could turn this into like something like a, an engagement like kind of like how Minoru Suzuki had the Katsu Nare like I wanted it to be like that so then being able to bring that over to AEW as well. Like it's, it's become its own thing now. It's like, I've always said wrestling's a concert, man. And the audience are your instruments. So the fact that like, I get to engage with the people and like, they get to be a part of my entrance. is like such a blessing G like, and you're saying like the swerve entrance is like, it's, man, swerve's like dope as well. He's got the dance of Nana. So like, there's going to be a time, man, where like his song's going to hit and my song's going to hit and it's just going to be like the ultimate collaboration. Hey, you guys might start dancing in the ring again. <laughs> one of these days, bro, one of these days. I think, uh, you know, all in coming up. We'll see. We'll see. Everyone is trying to speak that into existence, but that that is far away. We got a couple months left for that. This weekend, though, AEW, double or nothing. Be sure to get your tickets to Las Vegas. A few are left at AEWTix.com. Will Ospreay joining us. He will be trying to get that international championship. He'll be taking on Roderick Strong. Uh, Will, we have a few minutes left. Um, one thing I do want to ask you, because anytime I have someone from AEW on the show um, I bring it up and when it comes to Tony Khan I appreciate that he is as real as possible when it comes to his love for this business that he helped and then this company that he helped start. And whenever someone says something crazy or just flat out not true on Twitter, uh, he's not afraid to, 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 it doesn't matter who you are to say, Hey, that's not true. Um, and defend the company. Does that make you feel good in terms of like, yeah, I know that this guy has my back no matter what. Yeah, man. Like it's, it's his company, it's his Twitter account. If he wants to do whatever he wants, he wants to do it. But like, this guy's changed my life, man. Like, I can't tell you enough the gratitude that I felt seeing him at my last British Independent Wrestling show. The fact that he came down, man, didn't need to come down. Don't live, don't live in England. He was over for a Fulham game, but like said, I'm going to stay an extra day just to go see Will, just to see him sent off. What a boss, man. He's so passionate, he's so high spirit, and he just wants the best for everybody. So that's why, like, no matter what, man, I'm his foot soldier. If he needs me to do something, he says jump, I say how high, bro. That's a beautiful thing. Um, and, and speaking of Twitter, obviously, there's the, the word that always gets thrown out is tribalism. And now that you're at AEW, you're kind of in the middle of it. When it comes to that, do you, do you pay any mind to that? Or it's like, I'm going to handle my business and do what I do? I mean, uh, like, obviously, I, I had that one thing with the gr the grind thing, which, like, that's the first time I experienced it properly because, I once again, I like both shows. I love both shows. I, I like, I hope just everyone does well in pro wrestling. But, like, obviously, there was that, and I was wanting to fire back. I, I, I want it, like, put under the carpet now. Like, we're all good. But it is just kind of like, I, I hate the tribalism just because it is kind of like, I, I just feel like it makes wrestling so much more difficult for everybody else. It, like we just, if we all just sat down and enjoy wrestling, look, if you don't enjoy AEW, that's absolutely fine. Like your, your opinion's wrong, but like, you like, but, uh, but all in all, man, like I, I just want people just to enjoy pro wrestling. I enjoy pro wrestling. 
progress. I enjoy every little bit of pro wrestling. So I just wish everybody could do it as well. And I know you're trying to move past it, but I do want to know your first re- was your what was your first reaction to seeing those comments? And was it the thing that just everyone kept sending it to you and bombarding it yeah. that you were like, look, I got to say something because everyone and their mother is hitting me up about this. No, nah, man, like, look, fuck, is what it is. Like, uh, everyone sent it to me and people were saying, like, people within the company were saying, yeah, this is about, that was a that was about you. Like, so it's just like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm i over it now, but, like, I, I've said my bit. And the thing is, my thing was just, like, funny. Like, do you know what I mean? So like everyone, I feel like, took it, like, way too personal. All these old fucks that, like, I have a podcast that I think they know everything, man. Like, I couldn't give a fuck about these guys, man. So, like, I just... As soon as it was said, I fired back and it should just be done, man. Like, at the end of it, no harm done. I'm alive. And the thing is, I fucking like Triple H, man. I like Triple H. So it was a little bit, like, hard hearing that shit. And I was like, uh, I was nothing but respectful in all the fucking talks, man. Like, I have my own mission. I have my own objectives. I have my own goals. Like, just because that it doesn't fit in with your things, that doesn't mean, like, people should be firing my way so like if you fight like, i come from a generation you fire one back at me i fire one back that's that is a hundred percent the thing you did not say this out of the blue you were responding uh and that's what was frustrating but look we you said it at the press conference and thank you for giving me a little bit of insight on it um and you brought up your mission and it was very telling and very good to see when you you were on swerve strickland's podcast like the way that you guys were talking about the future um to you joining AEW, what is your mission, whether it's for you and the company? I mean, my mission is, is I'd like to take AEW a little, like, global. Like, I know, like, I, I feel like we could look at All In and see what a huge success that was. Like, 81,035 people, man. That's nothing to be sniffed at. What more can we do? There's a market in Australia. Bro, I was the same as in a car a little while ago. I've done a show in France for a company called Rixie, and there were, like, 1,500 people there just to see me. That's a big number just for me. What if you had the entire crew? What if you had everybody? Like, obviously you got that. I want to go back to Japan. I'd like to bring AEW there. You've got all the game changers in Japanese wrestling or in the company. If you do a show out there, the bitch will sell out. If uh, we could do Australia, I'd love to do that, man. I just want to take AEW everywhere just because I feel like there is such a niche market right now in in every in uh, in every country, there is a market for it. So why do we not explore it? That's a beautiful thing. We're going to close out with these three quick, quick questions. And again, thank you for the time. Um, sure. Of course, you and Brian Danielson at Dynasty. I want to know, before the bell rings, you're holding on to the ropes. Eyes pointed, looking straight at Brian Danielson. Before that bell rings, with the crowd going crazy and this moment finally about to happen, what was going through your mind? I'm about to I'm about to put on one of the greatest professional wrestling matches of my life. Don't fuck it up. Who smells the best in the locker room? Me. Me. I my I like I'm I'm so conscious about like smells and stuff like that. Like Japan, it was like installed in me. Like there was a wrestler back there that had a real bad stinky heat, we call it. So like I I always, man, I go out of my way to smell nice. By the way, Samoa Joe had said AJ Styles conditioner on his hair made him like the favorite person he'd love to wrestle. So that's what inspired the question. Shout out to Joe. And then, all right, here's the final question. You win that international championship on Sunday, right? You head straight to Uganda, yes or no? Do I go to Uganda? Yes, with the title. Man, I'd, honestly, I'm doing my best, man. But like, I, I'm in talks with them now. We are working something out, but it is just it's about finding time because it is it is. I've got AEW, I've got my family. I, I need to find a little bit of time in between just to go over there. But they they ignite my passion, man. Like honestly, it reminds me of when we used to backyard wrestle in my garden, and they don't even have nearly the same equipment that we used to have in my garden. To see their passion and to see their love, it it ignites this little fighting spirit inside me. And for me to be the best wrestler in the world, right? I have to wrestle everywhere. I've never wrestled in Uganda. I've got to go now. Yo, that's a beautiful thing. And will you talk about igniting, you know, your passion, uh, watching your wrestling again, uh, has done the same to me. So thank you so much. And thank you so much for the time. 
Bless you, my man. Thank you kindly. Hey, Will Ospreay, double or nothing. Get your tickets, awtix.com, as we kick off the summer here in Vegas. Will, be easy, brother. Be easy, my friend. Take care.